Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over an external runtime clock chip connected to the Arduino, but I'm not going to use a manufacturer's library. The only library we'll be using is the wire.h library. This is the third runtime clock video I've done. The first one was on an action display runtime clock. The second one was simulating the Arduino runtime clock, and then this one is going to be using an external runtime clock chip. I hope to do a video coming up where I do a comparison of the three. I'm going to start off with a completely blank file. The first thing we're going to add is the library, the wire.h library. And then I use an error, uh, just an integer error. When, when you call the I squared C bus on the N transmission, you, you can get an error code and you can read it if you need it. In this particular video, we probably won't be using it unless something goes wrong, um, but for the most part, it's just something I include. We're going to be using the DS3231 clock module, and it's divided up. You can think of it as memory locations, and what the first memory location, which is zero, because it's zero-based, is seconds, and the second one will be minutes, hours, day, date, month, and year. The seconds is zero to 59. The minutes is zero to 59, which should make sense. The hour is um, 0 to 23. It's a 24-hour clock. You can set a certain bit to change between 12 and 24, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. We're going to keep this fairly basic. The day just uses a nibble. It just uses four bits. So it would just use this byte right here, or this portion of the byte right there, to store the data. The date is 1 through 31. Of course, that'll change depending on the month. And then the month is 1 to 12. But the seventh bit, which is zero base, so it's actually the eighth location, denotes is, is reserved for the century. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the modulus of that. And what I mean the modulus is if you divide by 128, which is the eighth bit in binary, and you take the modulus, you'll get the remainder. So what we'll do, if we divide it by 128, we'll get the month. Or if we take the modulus of 128, we'll get the month. If we divide it by 128, then we would get the century. And we'll go over that when we get to that portion. And then the year is 0 to 99. And since it's only a byte, it can't have the first two digits, and that's what the century is for. We're also going to take a look at the temperature. The data for the time and date is in BCD, binary coded decimal. But the data for the temperature is not. It's just standard. And so I thought it might be nice to uh, show that in the, when I do the print um, bits. And the temperature is 0 to 7F. Um, the, the last bit is reserved for plus and minus because it's an unsigned integer. Or I'm sorry, it's a signed integer. And then the second bit in the temperature is the decimal point. And what it has, it's kind of interesting, it, it reserves the two most significant bits. So 0 is 0.0, 64 is 0.25, 128 is 0 0.5, and 192 is 0 0.75. And that's the accuracy of this device, is 0.25 Celsius. I need to comment this back out. In the setup, the only two things we're going to need is we need to start the wire, which is in that library we included. And then we want to set up a serial port so that we can, so we can show the data as we work through the tutorial. In addition to what we put in the loop here, we're going to have a couple of helper functions. I'm going to paste those in now. One of those functions converts the BCD value to decimal, and this is the equation you use to do that. The next one is takes decimal and converts it to BCD with this equation right here. And then we're also going to be able to print it in binary. So that way we can take our byte. This can take integers too, but I have it set up to take bytes for this example and it will print it out in binary so that we can look at it. We'll do that mainly when we look at the temperature, but it, it comes in handy. I have a video on this. Actually, I have two videos. I have one on the BCD to binary, a BCD video, and I have one on the printing in the binary. And I'll put the links to those in the description. In the main loop, I'm going to set a delay of, of, one, of 10 seconds. Uh, I want to do that so the data doesn't flood the serial monitor. It'll give us a chance to look at the data. And being 10 seconds, as the seconds increment, you'll see a nice even adjustment. We want to do a lot of math. As the editor knows, I don't like math. So, When you start, you have to know this address right here. 
0 times 6, 8 is the address of the real-time clock chip we're using. There are I2C scanner um, programs out there. I have a video where I show you how to create one. And I'll put a link to it up in the upper right and also in the description. But you'll need to know that value. And what you do is you, you begin the transmission, and then you want to write whatever memory location you want to start at. The memory locations we're looking for start at 0 and go through 6. So the uh, time will take up the first 7 memory locations. The temperature, though, jumps down to 11 in hex. So you have to remember that this is in hex. 0 times 1, 1 is a hex, which is actually 17. And it takes up 2 memory locations. So we're just going to start our transmission and we're going to set the memory pointer to the first byte so we can get the seconds. And here's where the error value comes into play. I go ahead and collect that on the end transmission because that will tell us if there is an error. This is the step that I mess up a lot on. You have to do this wired out request from. Then you put the address which matches that address up there. These two are the same. And then you tell it how many bytes you want to read. In our case, we're going to read two. And this isn't zero base, so it's not three. It's we're going to read two bytes of data. For this, for the beginning, we're just going to get the seconds and the minutes so I can do some quick display and show you some basics. And this command, what it does is it puts the data, you can think of it as putting it into a buffer. And once it's in that buffer, then we need to read it out. You do that with the wired.read command. So we're going to set our second, a byte variable, and we're going to read it. And then down here, we're going to read the minute. We're going to take the time to serial print each value. I will show you the second, and we're just going to print it as we read it. But then we're going to use that um, function I have down here, and we're going to convert it because it's going to come in BCD. We're going to convert it to decimal, and then we're going to print it again. And then we're going to print it in binary, so you'll see it in ones and zeros. We're going to do the same thing for seconds and minutes. I'm going to run this now and pull up the serial monitor. Now what we have here is we printed second, and then we printed the value of the seconds as we read it in. Then we converted it to we convert it from binary coded decimal into decimal, and then I show it to you in decimal over here or in binary right here. And we do the same thing for the minute. And you can see if we just read it in, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we're reading every 10 seconds. So the value should go up by 10 every time we pass through the function. And you can see the binary coded decimal, the converted value does that. It goes from 30 to, to 40. It does go to 51 there, and then to 1 and 11. So obviously there's a little bit of a delay in the way I have it set up. But you can see that it does make sense what you're seeing. Whereas over here, 48 to 64 to 81, 81 of seconds doesn't make any sense at all. But when you look at the binary over here, this is a, the first four, or this nibble here, equates to five, and the second one is one. And that's the way the data comes in. So you just have to convert it. And the same thing for minutes. Now we're going to go back and add in the rest of the, um, the rest of the date and time. The first thing we have to do is we have to change this to seven, because we're going to read in seven variables instead of, or we're going to read in seven memory locations instead of two. And then I'm going to comment out these lines, because we're not going to print this in this format. We're going to print it out as the date and time now. But you have to remember that the month, we need to rip off the 8th bit or the 7th bit, depending on whether you're zero-based or not. And we do that by taking the modulus. So we read in the month, and then we get the value of the modulus 128. Maybe the editor can take a minute here and put up a little graphic that shows how that works in binary. And then we're going to concatenate all that together and print it out. And we're going to start and we're going to print it standard without converting it. So we'll print the month slash date slash year and then a dash and then we're going to print the hour, minute, and second. And then we're going to come down and we're going to print it, we're going to convert it to decimal from BCD to decimal and then print it out again. We'll go ahead and run this and make sure that we have what we expect. 
we're bringing the month, the date, and the year. So the first month, the day, and the year is 50, 2050, which does make sense. And then, but the actual date is January 14th of, I guess, 2032. And then the time, this is where it doesn't make sense. 56, 56, 86, and 86. So you can see that it makes more sense down here. The date can be confusing if you don't make that conversion. It can look like it's right, but it's not. And then you can also see that the, you can see that the seconds count up, which is kind of interesting. We go from 86 to 6, 56 to 6. But that's because when you take your BCD and the value is less than 10, it'll be the same whether you're BCD or not. Any value that's below 10 because it just hacks off that the left nibble. But then it gets back to where it doesn't look correct down here. You can see as you go down 16, 26, 36 makes sense, but 22, 38, and 54 do not. So now we're able to print out our date and our time. Now we're going to print out the temperature. And so we do the same thing. We begin transmission and we do the ID of the device, but this time we want to start or put our counter at location 11 or 17. And then we go ahead and we start or we end the transmission so we're set and ready to collect the data. We want to collect two bytes, so we do that request, and then we have to read the data. For the first time we read it, we're going to get the temperature because that's 11. And then the second time, we're going to get that fraction. Then we have to convert the fraction into the 25, 50, 75, or 0. So we take that fraction, we divide it by 64, and we multiply it by 25, and that's how we'll get that. We're not going to get the decimal point, we're going to get an integer, but then we're going to concatenate the temperature up here, then a decimal point, and then the fraction. If the editor can, we can put up another slide here that shows how that this uh, works. So the first thing we'll do is we'll print the temperature in bits. So we're going to print binary the temp, we're going to put a decimal point, and then we're going to print binary the fraction. But we're going to print the fraction before it's converted. And then we're just going to serial print line the temperature in degrees C is, and then the temperature, another decimal point, and then the converted fraction. So we should see it in our display. I'm going to upload that now. Now I left the time in here and date, and then I've added this to the bottom, so it's going to repeat as it goes. But you can see, in binary coded decimal, this would be a 1 and a 6, but it's really 22 degrees. You take these two digits and you rip these off, and that's 3. 3 times 25 is 75. I'm going to go ahead and heat this up now, and you should see the temperature change. Oh wow, it really jumped. It went to 26. You can see the second digit here. 0.5, and that would be 2 if we ripped off the other 6. And now we're at 0. Now I'll let go of it. The final thing I want to go over is how to write data. So let's say you want to set the date. Currently the date is not correct, or the time. But if you want to set it, you have to do that a little bit differently. It starts pretty much the same. You do the wire begin transmission and the address of the device, and then you write to the memory location just like you would. And then you write the value you want it to be set to. So in this case, the first time we're pointing to 0, and then the value we write is going to go to seconds. The second time we write, it's going to go to, memory lo to the next memory location and write a 1. Just to make this clear, we'll go 3, 4, and 5. And so we're setting it to memory location 0, and then we're writing to 0, writing to 1, and writing to do writing to 2. So we're setting our seconds, minutes, and hours. We're going to set our seconds equal to 3, minutes equal to 4, and hours equal to 5. Now we're going to do that every time through this, so they're never going to change. And you'll see that when we write it here. So we set our seconds equal to 3. Oh, that's right, it'll take a pass to get through because the first time it just read it. <laughs> but that's funny how it 4. So we set it 3, 4, and 5. Now it doesn't read it for 10 seconds, so it's going to add 10 because of the pass, because of our delay. So 
it changed it to 13, 4, and 5. What if we set it to 34? We're going to set our minutes to 34, but we're not. We're setting it to an integer, not a binary coded decimal or anything. We're just setting the value 34. So let's upload this. What you see here is without the BCD conversion, it's 34. Converted, it's 22. So what we've essentially done is set our minutes to 22. And if you look at the binary conversion of that, it makes sense. But what we really need to be doing is we need to be sending 34, but we need to change it to BCD or to binary coded decimal first. And we can do that with the library down here, decimal to BCD. So we just took take this and we take we're going to take that 34 and we're going to convert it to BCD first. So now it's going to be converted to something. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it'll be converted to something and then the bottom number, or that should say 34. So let's run this now. And now you can see without BCD, we actually sent a 52 in a normal integer or a normal value, but it converted it to 34. So now we set our time to 534. The other thing that's different about writing data over reading data, you see I have the begin transmission right here, and I have the end transmission down here. And I'm doing all of my manipulation within that. Whereas if we go up to the read, up here we did the begin transmission, and then we set the pointer, and then we end our transmission, and then we do our requests from and all of our reading outside of the loop. It's just one of those little things I try to point out that can cause people some issues if they don't get it set up quite right. That and doing the request from before the read. You need to have both of these steps when you read. In this example, we didn't use any manufacturer's library. We read values out of the real-time clock. We set it to begin to transfer based upon the address of it. We write, we point to the first memory location or the memory location we want to read. In the case of temperature, it was 11. And then we end our transmission. And then we do a request to pull data from that device. And then we have to read out each one of those and store it in a variable. Or you could just read it and use it. Because um, we could put in there print, wire, read, and it would print out the value. I you the temperature portion where we can read two values, do a little conversion, and then display the temperature. And then down here I showed you how to set the values. If you just kept writing different values, you'd do your, you would work your way through it. If all you wanted to do was set the year, you could just change the value here, which would point to the memory location you want to write to, and then write the value, and then end the transmission. In my next video, I'm going to take this value right here, I'm going to take the value of the Arduino real-time clock, and the Nexion real-time clock and display them on the Nexion display. I'm going to have a button that you can push and it'll set everything to be equal. And then I'm going to plug that into some sort of UPS or something so it doesn't power down. And I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to put that up on my Facebook um, every once in a while. I don't know how often. Depends on how if it does error. If it doesn't error for weeks then I may give up but we'll see what happens. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.